spiritual food for thought. So this one I'm going to call the eternal God excuse. And one thing is that when people kind of compare what the secular scientists say when they claim that the world is millions and billions of years old, and you compare that to Genesis 1, where God says he made everything in six days on that first week, and then we kind of trace Adam to our current era, and a lot of people will say, well, it must be true. The world must be just a couple thousands of years old. Now, the one thing I will say is that God's words kind of always said that. It's always said he made everything in six days, and people have chose to believe it or chose to reject it. Man has changed his idea about how old the earth is a lot of times, and each time he changes it, it seems to get, you know, millions and millions of years older each time he changes his idea. I'm just going to throw that out there. Another thing is God was there when it happened. Man wasn't. Man's guessing. But one excuse that you get is you kind of debate within Christianity against what we'd call, you know, a young earth creationist and, and, a, and an old earth, you know, kind of somehow evolution and millions of years of death and destruction and suffering falls into play before the curse and before death enters the world, is people will use what I call the eternal God excuse. And what they'll say is, if God is eternal and without beginning or without end, how can you possibly say that he only started doing something 6,000 years ago? And it sounds kind of absurd, I mean, to think about this eternal God and he sat around forever, right? And then uh, 6,000 years ago started doing something. There's two points I'd like to make. The one is that there's no number you could pick that's large enough that it's going to sound any better than 6,000 years. You may think that, well, 6,000 years compared to, you know, 4 billion years or 5 billion years. I mean, that's a big difference, right? Uh, no, not compared to eternity. God sat around forever and then only, you know, 5 billion years ago started doing something? It's just as absurd. It just sounds better when you don't really think about that. That's why I like to call this a mental exercise, an opportunity for us to use our mind, not just to act mental, okay? So the other part is, is that eternity, we kind of think of time everlasting, time all the way in the future, but God exists outside of that realm. So it's different. It's not just that he sat there forever, you know, quadrillions and quintillions and whatever of years, and then started doing something 6,000 years ago, or started doing something, you know, 4 billion years ago. Okay? It's not that. Just like, how tall is God? Okay, he's without height. Well, how wide is he? Well, he's without, you know, width. How deep is he? He's without depth, okay? He doesn't have a height. He doesn't have a width. He doesn't have a depth. He doesn't have a time. He exists outside of that realm. Okay, so we're like these three-dimensional beings heading through this other dimension called time. He exists outside of that realm. Therefore, it's not like he sits there and sits there and sits there doing nothing until whenever things start. You know, like I said, compared to eternity, it's absurd to claim, oh, he just sat there forever and then finally started doing something. No matter which number you pick, it doesn't get any better. He's outside of that realm. So just some food for thought on that. It's just I've come across this uh, excuse lately, and I'm like, are these people even thinking about what they're saying? Because it sounds wise to them, but it actually makes no actual sense. All right. Be blessed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.